Hi, in this video, I'm just going to solve problems. Uh, I'm using McGraw-Hill practice tests, the study aid, and there are nine practice tests in that book, I believe, and I'm using the first one here. And I'm just going to solve problems and show you guys how I would uh, solve these problems. Yeah, there are three ways to solve math level two questions. One is you come up with the equation. You read the questions and you, you come up with the equation. You solve it. If you can get the answer, that'll be great. The second option is use your calculator. Okay, this test allows you to take use calculator. So please use calculator and know how to use your calculator. You can graph to solve questions or you can use solve options in some of the uh, calculators like such as TI-89 or Inspire. It has solve options, so it will solve the, the equations for you, right? And the third method is what I call barbaric way, uh, is you plug in numbers. If you run out of options and you don't know what to do, why don't you just try plugging in some numbers and see if you get the right answer, right? But those are the three ways, three methods that I will use, but uh, hopefully we don't use that third option, right? We can probably solve these by hand or by calculator. All right, let's just jump right to the, uh, the questions. Number one, it says c to the negative 1 power times 1 over a plus 1 over b. Now, what can I do? Uh, what I usually do is I look at the answer choices and see what I should do. Do I need to find a number? No, it's just a rearranging, simplify or something, and, and that's what they want me to do, right? Look at the answer choices. So let's go there. Uh, c to the negative 1 power is what? Is 1 over c. And what could you do with 1 over a plus 1 over b? The only thing you can do is probably come up with the common denominator and combine the two, right? So if I do that, quickly, I'll just put b on that side, a goes on that side, and then I multiply the two denominators, a, b. Right? And then what can I do? Just multiply that 1 over c into it. B plus A on the top, and then I'm going to rearrange the alphabet and say A, B, C, put the C at the back. Do I have anything that looks similar or same as that? Yes, I do. Answer choice C. It says A plus B over A, B, C, but it's the same thing, right? All right, so that's number one. Number two, you look at the question, and you look at the answer choices and see, okay, what can I do? What should I do, right? But the thing is, the first thing that probably came to your mind was, Hey, I probably need to expand it, x times x, x times y, x times negative 3, and do that for the rest of the terms here. But look, when you look at the answer choices, I have x plus y quantity square in three of the answer choices. So, if I think this way, what, what happens if I do that? I have that, right? And the second is I combine, I put the parentheses around x plus y, and then minus 3. When you multiply the 2, what can I do? Then I'll still need to expand, but I'm going to multiply those two, which I'll get x plus y quantity squared. Good. And then multiply that, which is negative 3 times x plus y. And then do this, which is plus 3x plus y minus 9. Then what do you see? I got one with the negative, one with the positive. These are going to be gone. Bye-bye. And you're left with x plus y quantity square minus 9. Do I have that in the answer choices? Yes, I do, right here. See, did I need a calculator? No, all by hand. Number three, I probably need a calculator for this because uh, it looks like we're going to need log to solve this. How do I solve 2 to the x is equal to 5? And I want to know what 5 to the x is. I probably need to figure out what the x is first, right? In math, the only one option to bring that uh, unknown variable in the exponent to bring it down is by using log or ln. I personally use ln. So I'm going to put ln on both sides. So if I put ln, it's ln 2 to the x is equal to ln 5. Okay, great. Then what? Hey, the third property in log allows you to bring that power down. It's the same thing as x times ln 2 is equal to ln 5, right? It's just a multiplication. So x is equal to ln 5 divided by ln 2. It looks very scary, but that is just a number in your calculator. Plug it in your calculator and get that number. And what do I do with it? That number, you're going to put it up there. So basically, what is 5 to that number? Here again, I need calculator to solve that. 
So when you do that, you should get 41.97 in your calculator. Okay, let's clear the page. Let's select cursor, scroll four and five. Number four, square root of 7x is equal to 6.24. Then what is the value of x? Solve for x, right? As I said, if you have TI 89, you can do solve parentheses and do all that, write all that stuff, and then solve for x, which I wouldn't do. This is simple to solve. So how do I get rid of that square root? I'm going to square both sides. Then what do I get? I get 7x is equal to 6.24 squared. x is equal to 6.24 squared divided by 7. Here again. You punch it in the calculator and you'll get the answer. Number four, answer is B, 5.56. Number five, sometimes you get this geometry definition kind of thing. And here again, let's look at the answer choices and what kind of answer we should expect. Uh, a is uh, a square, a circle, parabola, hyperbola, or an ellipse. Okay, so those are my options, possible choices for my answers. Let's read. If E and F are different points in a plane, then the set of all points in this plane, the sum of whose distances from E to F is constant. I've seen this before. Two points. So if you can visualize it, I'm going to put two dots. Let's say this paper, test sheet, was your plane, and I'm going to put point E and point F. Two dots. Okay, then the set of all points in this plane, the sum of whose distances, let's say I have arbitrary point P here, so sum of the distances from E to P and F to P. If I add the two, side 1, side 2, let's say, S1 plus S2 is constant. Hey, I've seen that before. Like this distance plus that distance is the same. This plus that is the same. What am I getting? Ah, remember this? Ah, it's crooked. But it is an ellipse. Remember? This is a definition of foci in ellipse. In ellipse, you have two focuses, call it foci, E and F, and the distance, the sum of their distance to a certain point is constant in that ellipse. Right now, the ellipse is a little crooked, but basically that is the definition of ellipse. So your answer is going to be E. Great. Let's move on. Five and then six. Now, number six, assuming cosine and secant are defined, okay, great. Cosine four theta times secant four theta is. Here again, let's look at the answer choices. Do I need to punch it in the calculator and get some kind of crazy decimal number? No. The numbers are fairly simple. Four, negative one, one, zero, and so on. So what does that mean? I need to do some kind of manipulation here. Okay, but in trig, basic trig, you know secant is what? Secant theta is equal to one over cosine theta. So therefore, if I have secant 4 theta, that is basically cosine 4 theta, right? Or 1 over cosine 4 theta. So therefore, it's going to be cosine 4 theta times 1 over cosine 4 theta. What do you get? Cosine 4 theta, bye-bye, 1, 1. Your answer is 1. So you're going to pick C. Move on. 50 questions in one hour. You don't have time to think or double check or whatever. You're just going to get the answer. If you get the right answer, you're going to move on. And then if you have time left over, you're going to go back and check if you had doubts. But I don't have doubt on that one, so I'm not going to come back to that question. Number seven, what is the equation of a line that contains the point this and is parallel to y-axis and perpendicular to x-axis? Whenever I see a coordinate, I like to draw, so I'll probably draw x-y-axis and find that point, negative 5, comma 2, right there. I have a line that passes through that point and has should be parallel to y-axis. Parallel? Then it has to be this, although it's not that straight, that line. And it is perpendicular? Yes, it is perpendicular to x-axis. So that right, right there, what is the equation of that line? Vertical line. It's not y equal to negative 5. It is x equal to negative 5, remember? And a lot of students uh, sometimes get confused with that. So the answer is x is equal to negative 5. Pick D and move on. 8. What is the distance in space between the points this and this? Wow, we have three-dimensional, x, y, z, right? But before we go there, 
that's my timer saying it's 10 minutes. But I'm just going to solve one more question and I'm going to uh, solve questions in, on my next video. Number eight, distance formula for two points that you know is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, right? But if you have a three-dimensional uh, point, then all you have to do is just add one more term, z2 minus z1 squared. Yes. So you're going to plug in. I usually use a second point as my, you know, x2, y2, and z2. So it's going to be 3 minus, you got to be careful on this one. Students make mistake here. 2 minus negative 2 squared plus 4. Whoa. How come it's not writing? Plus 4 minus uh, 1 square plus negative 1 minus 3 square in a square root. What is that? You can use your head, right? Plus plus becomes 5. 5 squared is 25. Plus 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Plus uh, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Square is 16 in a square root. You add the two. Those two are 25. So 25, 25. So that's root 50. Do I see root 50? No, I don't. So how do I simplify? Well, this is 25 times 2 in a square root. So that is 5 root 2, right? So here again, whether I should use calculator or not, look at the answer choices. Do you think I needed to use calculator? No, this had to be done by hand. If you use calculator, it'll be more confusing because it's like 5 times 1.417 and stuff. It's like, you know, crazy decimal number so-called dirty number I call it right it's a very clean number nice so that was up to eight I'll stop my video here and then we'll continue on my next video thank you